Hey, you guys, welcome back to the channel, Michael Clareda Arts. I'm, of course, Michael Clareda. So today we're, um, we're going to go into a piece of software that I've used in the past. I haven't really gone too deep into the software just because I have other pieces of software that I'm more comfortable with, let's be honest. Um, you know, Photoshop, Rebel, uh, Illustrator, you know, Sketchbook Pro, so I've used, uh, and also Clip Studio Paint. So I've used these programs for quite a while in my professional and uh, in my YouTube uh, endeavors. And there's always room uh, for more, <laughs> of course. So I'm talking about Fresco, Adobe Fresco. So whenever Adobe Fresco first came out, I remember watching the videos being amazed at the rendering engine and the fact that it had quote unquote live brushes that utilized the um, accelerometer uh, and positioning of the computer as well as you know the uh, GPU, CPU to make watercolor act real. And that was really cool to watch. Of course, you know, you have your Rebel software that's out there right now. If you're not familiar with that, um, I believe it's made by Smith Micro or owned by Smith Micro uh, Company. And Rebel is also a watercolor software, and it is wonderful as well. But uh, Adobe Fresco, if you subscribe to the Adobe Creative Suite, is included. And I think that uh, it's a very overlooked piece of software because... Even though it has a robust, uh, you know, rent, like I said, rendering engine and can do really a lot of things, I still defer to Photoshop because, number one, I've, I've used Photoshop for a long time, and it does a lot of the same quote-unquote things that Fresco does, but Fresco has a niche. Um, for those of you that use the software, you know that it's... <sighs> It's complex, but it's also, like I said, got that watercolor um, aspect to it. So what we're going to do today is uh, I've already completed a really rough, we're talking super rough uh, illustration sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to ink it. We're going to go through some of the menus and stuff that I, you know, the tabs and menus and way of doing things uh, with Fresco. Because I, I think it's important to not only... Um, add software as you develop in your artistic endeavors, but also to improve yourself and kind of expand your horizons. That's how discoveries are made, right? We discover things whenever we're kind of haphazardly or even focused going out and exploring our world. And, um, you know, Fresco should be uh, looked at. If you do currently have a subscription to the Adobe Creative Suite, then definitely download Fresco after you watch this video and have some fun. It's really cool. I was, you know, delight really surprised. I don't know why, you know, I decided to go ahead and, and get back into it. Maybe it's just my curiosity because I had the first couple times that I used it, it wasn't quite there. Some of the palm rejection issues and it was kind of weird. And I used it on a Surface Pro 8, I believe. And it was not very good. And I, I you know, I'm kind of going back to the beginning. Uh, <laughs> I always say that whenever I kind of go back and re- recenter myself um, to be creative again and Fresco popped up and I'm like, hey, you know, I haven't used Fresco for a while. Maybe they've done a couple things to improve. Um, I think it's important to note that even though Fresco is a very powerful piece of software, it it is made by uh, Adobe. So not, not knocking Adobe at all, but there are certain anomalies um, that... Uh, <laughs> that happen, you know, occasionally that a lot is attuned to what I refer to as user error. So if you're watching this and you're expecting a super top level review or um, execution usage of the software, then probably go on to another video that shows somebody that's been using this for a long time, you know, possibly a year, two years. I, I'm going to come into this kind of a novice and hopefully you can relate to that because I'm going to make discoveries just like you are. So let's go ahead and um, get over to the software and see uh, what kind of a mess we can make. Okay. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into it exactly like you would. So here's uh, my desktop. I'm working on my Surface Laptop Studio with the i5 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, shared graphics, just to give you reference. I know some Computers can't even run Fresco because Fresco requires the setting on the computer to be maximum to allow use of those um, 
those live brushes. So here is the open window. You can create new. It's got different uh, recents, uh, stuff that I've utilized. And also it's got uh, document, cop uh, custom sizes, and also <clears throat> pre-done template documents that you can utilize. So let's go ahead and you can share, um, you know, your documents and uh, you can take an interactive tour. They're very proactive whenever it comes to um, educating you about the software because they want you to use it. So let's go ahead and open this one. Excellent. So I have already done a sketch, but what we're going to do instead of going right into it and going to the inking process, we're going to talk a little bit about the interface. Um, you know, over here on the left-hand side, no, so this interface is very similar to what you would get possibly on an iPad or uh, maybe, a, uh, maybe a Samsung device if you can download and utilize Fresco because the interface is very similar, like I said, to iPad. I'm very familiar with this just because I've used it a few times and um, it's not as intuitive as I would like, like Procreate. Procreate's an extremely intuitive program that that utilizes gestures and some of those other things. And I think this program was originally set up to be a gesture-based program. But since I'm on a full PC, um, you know, I've got my quick key remote connected to it. So what we're going to do... Okay, so we're going to talk first about this this whole line of tools, very similar to Illustrator and Photoshop, but a little bit different. Um, so right now I've just got the pixel brushes selected. So I can add brushes um, and pretty much the majority of my Photoshop brushes that I have, I can actually add and utilize in Fresco. That's pretty cool. But I haven't added anything um, recently. So uh, these, what it's going to do, when we first open it up, um, it goes to what I was using last. So you can see what I was using last. But you see, it's it's got a nice selection uh in terms of pixel brushes um you know what you can utilize um, i mean it's got i think some of these i added possibly and let me see click on it but yeah it's got a lot of of different uh brushes already in here this it actually reminds me of Sketchbook Pro, uh, just the way that things are set up. Then I go back from FX, um, ink, lettering, marker, mixer brushes. So, you know, I can go in and I can mix brushes and change the color. Change color, what you would do. Well, actually, it's a flow. Go, you just click on the color. And it'll, you see, it'll mix. And utilize the underlying hue. Or value a little bit lighter here see it's just really cool it's got a beautiful it the feeling of it's really nice um, so then what we're gonna do is you know you can choose whatever brushes you want um, so I like use <clears throat> for sketching obviously I like using the uh, the pencil <laughs> it's pretty simple right Sketching, you're going to use the pencil. Um, and you can see there's a texture on here, which is really nice. Uh, it does support tilt. That was weird. There's a false positive right there. It does support tilt, which is really nice. So this, if I need to have a fine line and I can shrink my brush tip down. Or if I lay it on its side, you can see you can actually uh, get a very nice shading texture. And you zoom into that you can see it's just so nice you know we come here and we shade it's very cool um and then here's the star of the show right here the live brushes we're going to get to that in just a second so then you have vector brushes which i don't really utilize um you know it's got a myriad you got the manga brushes here and these are all vector, and, and it is definitely so it creates its own layer, vector layer, automatically, which is pretty cool. Whoops, we go back. So you can see the vector layer, and it's just so cool. And then even, 
I thought this was pretty cool. The pressure is wonderful. Uh, and these are all vector lines, which is pretty cool. So we're going to, to delete a layer, you can do a couple things. You can click on this blue little icon on the layer and you can delete that layer. Or you can come over here to the uh, layer actions and it'll bring up the layer actions menu. Um, oops. So let's do that. Let's go delete. Okay. So we're going to get out of those a vector. And then here's really the star of the show. So watercolor, oil. These are what are known as live brushes. So this is actually going to act like watercolor. So watercolor wash soft. I'm going to pick a color really quick. Whoops. Let's go over here. And you can see it will, since I'm on this layer that had a, uh, the pixel layer that had some of the pencil uh, shavings on there, but really the pressure, see how it moves, that color moves into the area. Maybe a little bit more. And it acts really just like watercolor. So whenever you click on each tool, you can see the sub menu down here. These menu icons change. Um, and then you see this little puck down here. So this is a touch shortcut. If you're working, 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 and you want to put your finger right here, you can uh, you can change the uh, actions of what it's supposed to do. So you touch it, and then it becomes a usable, uh, you know, a usable action. See, it's just so beautiful. I mean, the like I said, the engine is so nice. Let's change that down to a red. Get a little bit more red in here. You see how that changed blue? Okay, so now we're good. So whenever it changes blue, it's in the eraser mode. I don't know how that works. Maybe it has to do with add water. Yeah, add water in the live brushes. So whenever it goes here, now it's in app apply paint mode. And you can see that. Just a beautiful, and you can zoom in, and it's just gorgeous, lovely, wonderful. So then I can actually, I add water flow. So if I want more water in my paint, so it's going to go wild here. And it's just, if I want less water, I click on that icon. I can have less, and I have more paint. So you're not going to see as much flow. Um, these are things that I recommend you experiment with because obviously, like I said, I am a novice uh, at this particular piece of software. I don't utilize it enough to really give you a grand understanding of all of the features that this thing has. Um, you know, the eraser, obviously this is an eraser. And you can change the different brushes, so hard round opacity. So we come here and you erase out. Uh, sponge, here we go. So we're gonna soak up some of that water with sponge. You can see it's just beautiful. Give it a nice textured, oh man. It almost has like a, a, a nebula feel to it. Right, and you can go in and just, oh, so beautiful. Okay, and then we have the smudge tool, which, another thing that it does, so the most recent um, tool that I utilize, it'll display them right here. So if there's a set number of brushes that you use on that particular icon, it will bring up the most recent brushes that you've used. So you don't have to scroll through and go through all the interface. Because look, <laughs> I mean, in the smudge tool, it brings up basically all the existing brushes that you have and in, you can utilize those if you have a favorite brush and you want to con have consistency across the board, then, you know, you can use those brushes. And what it does is it smudges. I mean, some of these kind of like a canvas brush. So you're going to see some of that canvas texture in there, you know, and then if you go again back, um, let's do the chunky. So you're not going to get that texture in there. It's just a chunky feel to it. And those are the smudge brushes. Here's the, uh, the move slash transformation tool. So I click on this and it automatically brings up that selection box and you can, you know, shrink and enlarge, um, your document, uh, application of paint or sketch or whatever. And 
here's the rotation tool right there, which is pretty nice. So we can move it and then it's got skew. So if you want to skew it left or right, that's pretty neat. Distort, you can distort it, give it some cool perspective. Um, and what's cool is you can feel it kind of snap. It snaps, which is nice. So I don't have program to shift. <clears throat> perspective, now it's gonna go you know, perspective. Very similar to Photoshop. Um, and then liquify, commit transform, don't show again, continue. And you just got warp. So that's pretty cool if you wanna, very similar to the, to the warp filter in Photoshop. You can do really a lot of different things. And of course, you can go in and just start messing around with how things look. It's almost like a, like I said, a nebula. Bloat, so on and so forth. So these are things that you can do whenever you're done uh, up here. There's this new window up here. You just hit done and it applies transformation. Um, so here's the selection tool. So you click on that. The lasso, the magic wand, paint selection, rectangle, and, el and ellipse. These are things um, that are very, again, familiar with, uh, if you're familiar with uh, Photoshop, you know, here's ellipse. So the selection, if you were to cut and paste, so you can hit erase and it erases that. You can transform that. So these are things that, uh, hit done, I'm go back. Okay. So these are things that you can examine and really have fun with. Um, here's the fill. So if I want to fill the background with something, you can fill the background. Pretty simple. It's like a paint bucket. Uh, and if you if you don't have any if you don't have a keyboard connected to this, which I don't, I have my Quick Key device, um, and you want to utilize the on-screen uh, tab and controls, here's a, the backward undo, and here's the forward redo. So pretty simple, right? Um, here's the uh, shape tool. So it's got predetermined shapes and you can, you can see I applied some stuff here. It's me as an old man. I decided to use a filter. And then what you can do is you can fill that and then, ah, there we go. There's me as an old man. And you can use it, fill. So very quickly, um, you can do a lot of things with the different tools uh, that are provided to you in this piece of software. Uh, here's the uh, eyedropper. Obviously, eye drops, and it corresponds over here. Um, <laughs> I keep popping up. Why? Done. Okay, so let's go here. Here's the eyedropper. Like I said, the eyedropper. Um, so let's say I'm here on the on the. Uh, on just a sketch, let's go ahead and change the color of this. Here I am on the sketch, I'm sketching, I'm sketching, sketching, and I wanna change the color. Um, what you can do is just go down here, I'm gonna change the color to right there, and I go back to the sketch, and now I can use the color that I just selected. Here is the um, place image. So if I wanna place an image, let's go to files. Let's do a little bit, that's Freddy. Place image. It's not. There we go. Let's do that one. So, place that image, and I can resize it. I can rotate it using the, um, the toolbars there. And then let's say, okay, hit done. It's created its own layer by itself, and I want to change the transparency. So I don't want to get over these uh, too quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. But if I want to change the transparency. I can go ahead and change the layer transparency utilizing that tool right there. Okay. So, uh, and if I don't want it there anymore, image layer, I click that and I can either merge down to what's below it or I can go ahead and delete it. And then down here you have brush size that you can change the brush size. If I want it really big or if I want it really tiny, you know, the size two, the really tiny. These are things that you as a user will go in and examine and find out what is the best way to do things for you. Um, 
the smoothing, it's got a smoothing feature, which I don't typically have smoothing on, but by default, some of these brushes up here have smoothing on, so I don't really play, pay too much attention if I'm working, 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 and I want the best feel for the sketch process, which I typically turn smoothing off because I like to feel how it how it draws, but honestly, it uh, and typically whenever you put smoothing on, you will have an issue with performance. But I don't have that on this machine, and the smoothing really doesn't bother me. So I just I don't I don't really bother um, messing around with uh, you know with messing around with the smoothing on any of the brushes. I just leave it. Okay. So and then we come to the brush uh, settings now. Just like in Photoshop, you can change the brush settings blend mode <clears throat> using the different provided uh, blend modes here, and then the pressure dynamics. You can change how it reacts and how it how it. Uh, you can see it's got a live display of exactly what's going to happen whenever you change these sliders up here, and you can change the flow. You know, and right here, I believe, is to reset the brush settings to their default. And then if you want to change the stylus pressure, you can change the stylus pressure from light to heavy, uh, depending on your preference. So these are customizing these, uh, these elements to really cater to you as a user. So that's the tools over here on the left-hand side. Whenever you start actually drawing, you're going to be utilizing not only these tools over here. Whoops but also some of the items over here on the right hand side. So like I showed you a moment ago, you have the um, blend modes right here and very like a, very similar to Photoshop and it gives you an example like if I wanted this to be on multiply, this layer to be on multiply, now we're on multiply. Okay. Make sure that it's on multiply. Yes, it is. Okay, change that layer mode right there. So let's go ahead and turn on the sketch behind. And we're going to change. Okay, so to show you what that does, basically, here we are normal. It's opaque. Change it down to multiply, and it will basically be uh, transparent to allow different... Uh, images uh, and image values and color and stuff to come from underneath so and then you go I mean for those of you who know Photoshop then yeah you're gonna go in and decide on what the best option is for you as far as the um, blend mode but that's nice that they have that option so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer delete layer and you can see I have sketched out a scene <clears throat> with my characters using the, let's go and go to black here, using the um, the pencil brush. Uh, what's great about the pencil brush, first of all, it's got a great drawing experience. And then it does have tilt, um, and I am on a Surface device using the, um, using the Pro Pen 2 Slim Pen, Slim Pen 2. So I Place it on a side. So I'm drawing. Let's go ahead and give you an example. So I'm drawing, right? Drawing, drawing, drawing. Just having a good old time. Yeah. He's angry. Ooh, angry eyes. Maybe he's an elf. He's like, you need to give me what I'm asking for. And then maybe he's a... He's a... A conquistador. Anyway, so... I did that with the tip of the brush. If I, I tilt my brush over, now I can shade. I increase the brush size, and you can see very quickly it becomes a wonderful sketch tool. I was floored the first time that I started using Fresco because I, I, I envisioned it as a quote-unquote watercolor software, but the pencil is probably one of the best pencils out there. I would equate it to some of the pencils on Procreate because on the Apple device, you can turn the pencil over and it's wonderful, just delightful. <clears throat> um, 
and then you know we come here we have a perspective uh snapping if you're if you're doing specifics uh page layout or something like that and you did a perspective grid you can add grids you see it adds grids and you can do rule of thirds it's got 25 lines so if you want to do three uh and depending on right now the grid colors let's do red okay there we go spacing grids graph perspective you can do perspective grids which is pretty cool you can edit your vanishing points so this will help out if you're a comic book artist or edit vanishing points yeah so you can edit your vanishing point and give different perspectives and that will actually help you whenever you're drawing because you know maybe i need and i'm looking and it actually will use the perspective grid to help you out that's pretty cool. Very similar. This is very similar to something like Krita. Krita has this feature. So does Sketchbook Pro. Um, so that's pretty sweet. You can change your grid color, so on and so forth. These are things that I don't utilize usually. Uh, just because I'm, I'm utilizing this particular software as a sketch concept software. And then whenever I get my sketch done... I'll go in with some of the watercolor stuff and maybe uh, maybe this paint and, and pastel. And if I need to have, you know, correct perspective, super correct, then this is a really good option. Um, you know, doing buildings and stuff like that. See how fast you can go in and create uh, a correct perspective with buildings. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you can annotate um and share with other people uh but these are two of them that i would utilize the most so whenever i press this button right here it hides the layers and then if i want to add a layer i just press this little button right here and i can add a pixel or a vector layer which is pretty cool again a very robust piece of software <clears throat> that has a lot of capabilities that I probably will not utilize through the entire duration of explaining um, how I use the software. So let's go ahead and turn that grid off here. Okay, get rid of that. Let's go here. And we're going to go back to my illustration. So I did this illustration um, this morning, just really quick sketch showing Beans, my, my lovely uh, alligator character. And he's at a fruit stand, um, you know, negotiating and talking about fruit. Uh, and he's got a little bear character right here that's sitting on a 69 cent barrel of beans. Um, <laughs> beans and beans. Uh, and yeah, so this is basically what I did as I sketched everything out. And what I usually do um, is I'll put this uh, either on a layer transparency or I will adjust the layer opacity, which is basically what I'm going to do here. And then if this had color in it, so let's go ahead and, and click a layer with color. Go ahead and click that. Okay. Okay. Let's go to a live. No, let's go to this brush right here. And... These are vector brushes. I don't want a vector brush. Let's do standard brush right here. These are pixel brushes, sketching, and we'll go, here we go, the Mega Pack. Okay, that's Kyle. It didn't load my brushes. I can see that, because I had some brushes that I had loaded, and I know that there are some brushes that you can download from Adobe. Um, so let's do block here and then change the color to orange very nice so then if i want to if i want to do things uh with the color already in the document i can go to hue saturation i can change the hue shift i can change the saturation of it and i can darken it um, if i need to okay blend mode and i can do linear burn yeah, see what that does. It changes the overall hue spectrum of that particular layer, which is pretty cool. 
And then of course I can go in and change things as needed. So then if I don't like this, uh, since this is, I believe, like a hue saturation layer mask, I can go in and uh, delete it. Okay. And then I'm left with what I had before. So let's go ahead and delete. Okay, so, uh, and then you come here and that clips with the layer below it, similar to a clipping mask uh, in uh, Photoshop. And right here brings again that layer actions. Right here is the animation tool. If you wanna start doing animation, uh, you can do that. That's the timeline. And if you need to have a measurement, here's the ruler. So that basically, and if you wanna share it, you can quick export, share a link to it. Um, it says preview time lapse. So let's click that. Let's see what it did. Yeah, you can see all the way to the end. So it does something very similar to what Procreate does. It automatically records the entire process from start to finish. So that is a delight. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. I can sit back and enjoy the drawing process and not have to worry about time-lapse video and settings and everything else. So that is wonderful. So let's go ahead. We're going to go back to the pixel brushes and we're going to go down to the sketching and we're going to choose our pencil because we love the pencil. And then we're going to choose the uh, smoothing feature and we're going to jack down the smoothing just a little bit to get a better feel. Because essentially what smoothing does is the computer and the AI engine determines what the best course of action is uh, for you. And a lot of times that's not the best. So, yeah, so I like to change that. So that's correct. That's correct. Let's go down to the brush settings. Um, I did reset these. So in terms of velocity, flow's good. Pressure dynamics. Okay, flow a little bit more on the flow. Sizing, you see it does change things slightly here. It's velocity, not elites. Yeah, we're gonna go a little, we want a little bit more taper. So this basically should say taper. So this basically blows out the taper and here we are. We're gonna go a little bit darker. So I like that. So that is a delight. So now what I basically do is, <laughs> I go in and I finalize my drawing. Now I can change the size of this. So right now it's at seven, I think seven pixels. So we go down to six. That might be good. So what I do, a little bit bigger. For those of you that follow my channel and you've been with me a while, you know that I love texture brushes. That's a little bit too non-texturous. And basically what I do is I'm going to come back and I'm just going to redraw. It's not, I'm not tracing per se. I'm finalizing that line to give me a final line of what's going to, oops, what's going to be the best. My computer just fell off the stand. You didn't see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it back into the slot here and go and continue on. My apologies for that. So right now I haven't got the brush dialed in exactly the way I want it. So let's go back. Pressure dynamics. Everything looks good here. Velocity. So there's pressure dynamics. I like the flow. Size a little bit more. Okay. I'll make sure. Yeah, you can see that. You can see the, the smoothing on there that's causing a problem that I don't particularly like. Let's see here. Still smoothing a little bit, but I'm not really happy with. I like a lot of variation of line weight in my art as well. Variation of line weight, of course, being the thickness and the thinness of the light line based upon the pressure. Um, and right now it's a little static. 
you see how this pressure is the same as this pressure and it shouldn't be like that so I need to go ahead I need to make that a little bit thicker and see what that does is it gives me um, it gives me uh, a much more livelier line than it would is if I just did a singular um, like this which is the same across the board I don't like that I like it whenever it goes this and then it thickens and then it gets thin again see I like that and I haven't landed on the correct pressure curve yet so let's go back to the brushes let's see smoothie toothy I do like me some tooth in my pencil new vine move on which is probably going to be a little bit harder yeah I don't like that okay toothy pencil smooth that's pretty nice. Let's see how that rides. That's a little thick. Of course, we can change the size of it. Jack that down a little bit. You know pretty quick if it's going to work. And this is just me being... An artist. <laughs> um, I haven't landed on what brush I'm going to use yet. So you get to see my thought process or hear my thought process. Graphite flow, graphite soft. I think that's going to be too soft. I think that's going to be too erratic. I think fine grain might be okay. That's a little light. But I do like the line weight a lot in that. So I might be able to modify that a little bit yeah I haven't landed on it yet nope okay so let's go back I'm sorry I'm being very picky pencil it's a pencil this one is pretty much what I want I just haven't landed on the style of pressure let's go a little bit done let's turn all the smoothing off all of it get off my pencil yeah I do like this one I feel like I'm pressing too hard though um, so let's go back pressure dynamics size okay I don't really do much with velocity okay let's do that Okay, so what I'm going to do, because right now I'm in that zone where I need to, yeah, I see that I messed up the pressure on it. Um, I'm in that zone where I really need to focus <laughs> on the drawing um, instead of, you know, dilly dallying. So let me go ahead and get everything wrapped in to what I need to. And uh, I'll come back as I flesh out the process of, you know, drawing and, and getting where I need to get, um, you know, for the pencil work. So, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, so what I've done is I've landed on a brush that I'm pretty happy with. It's not the best, but I think that based upon my current experience with Fresco, I think that it's going to be okay. <laughs> so hopefully at the end, I'll be happy with what I got. Um, you know, I could import, basically import one of the brushes that I utilize in Photoshop. And it is my favorite brush. It's a sketch brush and it's got great texture. And, um, you know, I, I've used it in a myriad of different illustrations to give me kind of the same look. But at the end of the day, if you don't have access to that brush, it makes really, it, it kind of puts you at a disadvantage, you know, if you want to utilize a software similar to the way that I do. So I'm not going to grab that brush. We're just going to use it, you know, use what they gave me. All right. So what I'm doing now is I'm just blocking in the, increase the size. I'm blocking in the, um, the final line. So whenever I do drawings, obviously you saw the sketch. It's pretty rough. There's a lot of 
construction lines. There's a lot of things that is going that are going on that maybe don't lend itself to the final illustration. So what I'm doing now is I'm going back and I'm just putting in that final line. You know, going looking, looking for what's going to be the best line in the piece of artwork, right? Not quote unquote um, tracing. You know, I'll look at what's there and, you know, in my brain, I'm like, okay, um, that's going to be a shirt. His elbow comes down and maybe I see a little bit of that under elbow. And you've got these folds, all these folds right here that are happening. And I might, as I progress through, you know, have to make some changes. And that's completely fine. It is my illustration. I can do whatever I want with it. And that's important to know, too. You're not really bound by, you know, somebody else's, especially if you're working on something by yourself. You're not bound by somebody else's opinion. You can do whatever you want with your piece of artwork. You know, like, if I want this pocket square, I can make it square. If I want a, you know, rectangle, I can make a rectangle. He's wearing overalls, so basically. And now what I'll do is I'll just put some of the folds in. And, you know, typically what I would do in this situation is to... Basically, let's go ahead and do this. Going around. Basically, go in and... Put in the final line, you know, maybe I'd have a pair of headphones on, listening to some classic 80s music. I like 80s music a lot. Um, you know, and just enjoying myself, enjoying the morning. Not putting too much pressure on myself to get things done. This isn't a quote-unquote work illustration, so I can take my time. I can take five days on this thing, 10 days, 20 days. I can work on it five minutes at a time if I want. And that's important to know, too, because, <clears throat> you know, these little experiments that I have, um, I, I just, I want to have fun with them, you know? Most of the stuff that I put on social media is just fun. Very rarely do I put work up there, because I'm bound so by, by so many NDAs. It doesn't really behoove me to put stuff up there that I'd have to take down or, you know, get in trouble for. I don't, I don't want to ever put my clients in jeopardy, especially whenever it comes to copyright, uh, you know, stuff that comes out before it should. And <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. So that's why you don't see a lot of my quote unquote work up there. I mean, what I put up there is work, but it's my own personal fun. I don't put, you know, stuff that I quote unquote get paid for usually, unless I get a an okay to do it. You know, yeah, you can post it on social media. I'm still not really happy with the way the line's turning out. I can already see myself going back. And manipulating and you know possibly redoing the line a little bit more especially on him because I want him to be I want him to be kind of the, the centerpiece okay here's his finger coming around here's the knuckle right there's a little claw that comes out he's got these folds yeah, see that line's boring to me. It needs to be needs to be better. See, whenever I do the stroke, the stroke turns out pretty good. Oh, I'm being finicky and picky and you're hearing it. I'm sorry. Usually I kind of inhibit myself from that outer dialogue. Okay. Get a crease that comes here, here, here. Separation. 
And I didn't really, I didn't really get this other, whoops, the way I wanted it. Oh, it's an eraser. Let's go back to heart round opacity. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just for posterity and the fact that I don't want to have an hour and a half long little tutorial thing on fresco, I'm going to go ahead and put you on time lapse because I want to actually, I say actually a lot, I'm sorry. I want to do some color on this too, so I don't want to go, I don't want to use up all the time on the sketch phase. So let's go ahead and do a time lapse. Okay, and here we are at the, I'd say, 85% of the um, final line work. So it's a little bit different than where we started. You know, we started out as a very rough illustration, rough sketch. I've uh, corrected some of the perspective issues and um, some of the construction issues. I've added a character over here. Um... You know, and started getting into a little bit more of the storytelling. So, Beans is visiting his local fruit stand, right? Um, this is part and partial to the uh, to the story that I've been working on for a while of Frank and Beans. Frank is a bear, and Beans is the happy-go-lucky, um, you know, free spirit. So, Beans, or I'm sorry, Frank was a Russian uh, circus bear, Oh, we're going to get into more of those illustrations uh, as I progress on, but mostly this is just an exercise, right? I wanted to get into fresco and see how good it was with the pencils, and so far I love it. I think it's a fantastic program for penciling. Um, funny thing is, is over here on the left-hand side, so I did add some of my pencils from Photoshop and unfortunately, they didn't work out so well. Um, you see, I've added Aaron's Custom Brushes 1 and Joel Santana Fave Brushes. 747 brushes in there. Um, I, I think that that's a little overkill. But the thing is, with these brushes, I utilize uh, my favorite brushes right here, which is the Pastel C brush um, from Photoshop from Aaron Blaze's uh, CreatureArtTeacher.com. If you're interested in that brush, I've used it so many times on this channel. You can go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, wait for the pop-up, and sign up for the free newsletter, and you'll get that brush along with his custom brushes one and a free P PDF. I'm not plugging his channel. So many people have asked me for that particular brush, and I'm not going to upload it and let you have it for free. There is a cost involved, and that's putting in your email, and then you'll get the brush for free. So, um... So, yeah, uh, it's a great program so far. What I'm going to do is, as I progress through the illustration, just like I usually do, I'll stop and I'll come in and tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I want to utilize um, some watercolor 
brushes in this particular illustration. I want it to be a little bit softer, uh, but I still wanted that, you know, that darker line weight, um, you know, for the the foliage and the characters and stuff like that. So again, this is an experiment utilizing Adobe Fresco. Um, this isn't a tutorial of how to do an illustration. It's not a tutorial on using Adobe Fresco as a, uh, you know, as a teaching tool today. All I wanted to do is just kind of say, hey, I'm going to use Adobe Fresco. This is the basic layout of the tools on the left, the menus on the right, and see how it drives. Um, I am using the Surface Laptop Studio i5 processor, 16 gigs of RAM. There um, hasn't been any issues that I can see. It runs it really, really, really well. The only thing that I could say is the glove um, with the hand rejection, palm rejection software. You need to remember that you don't want to confuse uh, Fresco or the program of what you're using. So I actually turned off the uh, the ability to paint with my finger because you can finger paint in this program. And I use a glove and it is it is phenomenal. It is really fast. Um, I you know, the fan really doesn't kick on. So I'm very happy with that. Um, but overall, you know, as you see, I've had a lot of fun today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love doing illustrations like this because it's basically me sewing back into myself and, um, you know, just having some fun in the meantime. So stick with me today. Uh, I'm going to try and finish this illustration and I'm going to put you guys on time lapse. It does take a while. We're talking like three and four hours to do something like this, especially since I'm not super familiar with the program so be patient we'll get to the end and we'll do a um you know we'll do a wrap up so all right so enjoy the time lapse <music> And that wraps up my foray into the wonderful world of Adobe Fresco on the Surface Laptop Studio. So I had a good time. It was really good. Um, the familiarity of the Adobe products that is across the board, whether it comes to Photoshop, Illustrator, Fresco, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere Rush, After Effects, you know, all those programs have a similar feel because they're manufactured by Adobe. So I really didn't have a lot of issues when it came to learning curve with regards to this program. I've used this program before, um, primarily on the iPad. 
and I enjoyed it on the iPad. It was good. I used it whenever it first came out, and there were some hiccups with palm rejection and some of the live brushes, um, but they seem to have solved a lot of those issues, and I really had a good time. As a drawing and sketch um, slash rendering program, I think it's fantastic. It doesn't uh, hang up on the Surface Laptop Studio, and I really just enjoy the live brushes, the watercolor brushes, the painting uh, engine is very nice. Um, it does have a couple little weird things that probably has to do with this guy right here. Um, you know, whenever I'm going through and I have to open up an extra tab and I don't know the quick key to delete um, a layer or create a layer mask or something like that. And that probably would take, you know, just getting into the program and using it on a daily basis. I say this numerous times uh, in my entire channel run. Um, you know, to get better at something, you have to do something uh, every day, every other day, and be immersed in it. And if you really want to get into this program, I think that uh, it would benefit you and pay off in the long run. Um, am I going to use this in my daily work? Probably not, because I have Photoshop, and Photoshop is something that I'm used to, and I've got that muscle memory. Um, you know, whenever I go and I do my quick keys and and just all the things that are involved with having an enormous amount of time in a certain program. Um, I did have fun though. So just note, if you want to have some fun, try Adobe Fresco out. You know, if you're used to Procreate um, on the iPad or on uh, a, uh, a Windows device, then yeah, get in there and, and you know, throw around some digital ink. Um, as far as it running on specific machines, it is important to note that your machine does have to have some type of either integrated graphics card or graphics card to be able to run this program, especially now it might be able to run the program, but it probably won't be able to take advantage of those live brushes. And that ultimately at the end of the day is really why you would use this. I think those live brushes are fantastic and create great, incredible, beautiful images um, with those. And I like the pencils in here too. So you do need to have a decent computer to be able to run this and just know that uh, if you download it and start to try to use it. They're like, and you're like, wait a minute, I thought he said it would work on my program, on my on my PC um, or my iPad or whatever. You know, just try it out and uh, and see if it works. The, the comparable program that is out there would be probably Procreate or Rebel. Uh, Rebel, I believe, made by Smith Micro. I'm, I'm probably completely wrong on that. Um, I have it in my... <laughs> I don't use it as much as I would like to, but Rebel is also a software that has a watercolor uh, emulation soft, uh, emulation engine in it, and it uses the accelerometer, so you can tilt your device left or right or forward or backward. Obviously, that's not how it is if you're on a desktop, but you can adjust the gravity, you can adjust the water flow, you can adjust... You know, you can dry the water, you can have the different papers, which have different um, porous surfaces. And the things they're doing with digital today is absolutely wonderful. You can emulate, you know, watercolor uh, in a digital world. And that's really cool. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do for you guys today. This illustration is part of a larger uh, body of work that I will be um, translating over to a coloring book, hopefully by the end of the year. And of course, Frank and Beans has been a story that I have been writing now for years. Of course, work gets in the way, but I will definitely be doing something this year. 2023 for me is the year of change and I'm super excited. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video and uh, just sat back and uh, enjoyed the narration and got a cup of coffee and, and took I'm on not a... sure I understand. And took a journey. That's my watch. <laughs> um, took a journey at, with me in the creative process. So thank you guys for watching my channel. Please like and subscribe and share. And definitely go out and do something fun today. I can't because it's raining. It's been raining forever. So if you got sunshine where you are, definitely go out and soak, soak up some of that vitamin D. And uh, draw something uh, that you see. Okay, we'll see you next time.